Hi everyone, in this video I want to introduce you to a new Python web framework called FastHTML, which has got the vision to make it very easy to create quick prototypes, but also make it easy to create scalable, powerful and rich applications without knowing a front-end framework like React or Angular. FastHTML allows us to create interactive applications with HTMX, which allows us to create interactive applications without the massive overhead like a virtual DOM and all that stuff which modern JS frameworks use. I'm gonna show you the basics and simple examples and also a very basic chat application with Langchain since many of you wanted to learn how to build a UI with Python. Okay, I'm in VS Code and on the left you can see multiple files. You can also get access to these files if you follow the link in the description. So the first step is to install the package. So we install it by pip install python fast html and after that we're gonna have a look at the very basics so first we're gonna explore the basics.py so we're gonna import everything from fast html and there is the common module and this common module has got this fast html class so we can create an instance of an app and then like in every other web framework in python you can create a route so we create a very simple get route where we serve this HTML in the root route. So we create a function and return this simple HTML element. At the end, we also call the serve function here. And then we can just use python basic.py. And this will now set up our application and it will be accessible on port 5001. Okay, so this is how it looks like in the browser. As you can see, we are on local host port 5001, so nothing really shocking. This exactly displays the HTML as it is. But to be honest, this is not the best way to do it. There are some helper classes and we import it here just by using this wildcard operator. So for helper classes, we've got something like a diff. This is a normal diff container in HTML. We've got an H1, which displays text a little bit larger than let's say with a p tag so these are all very common html tags but you can just use python syntax to create this simple website you can also create functions to create interactive reusable components and use it like this so we've got our html content and we iterate just uh, five times and append the html content here to this list and at the end we create a diff so like in every other JavaScript framework, we have to return a single element from that. So we wrap the diff around our HTML content and then at the end we serve it again. So this now looks like this. If we refresh the server, we can see that now we've got five times hello world, some text and some more text. So also very easy to do that in a loop. So now let's have a look at the app.py. This app.py contains a very simple example of a to-do app. So we're gonna use some other classes here. So in this case, we're gonna use the fast app function, which will create an app instance and also a router instance. So router is used to post or get data and not just to serve HTML. So we're gonna create this simple to-do app by creating an empty task list first, and then we're gonna create our first route. So this is again the home route or root route, and we create a get method here we then create an HTML form like this. So we use the Python syntax, but this is exactly the same like if you used vanilla HTML. So we create a form with an input field, which is of type text, and we can also add a placeholder. We then can also add a button. And for this form, we want to have the, a post method and we want to post the action to this add task route. Okay. so we don't only want to have a form here, but we also want to display the tasks. And this can be done by using an unordered list, in short, UL. This again, the same like in vanilla HTML. And then we are gonna create for each task, a li item, a list item, where we provide the task as text. And then we also gonna create an a tag where we can make a post request again and we can delete the task with a specific index here. So we're gonna iterate over every task and create that task list. And then at the end, we're just gonna return a single HTML element again here with this titled class. So we create a title to do app and an h1, my tasks. And here we pass in just the functions which will be rendered then by fast HTML. 
Okay, so the next step is that we create our add task route where we only allow a post method. And what we're gonna do here is that we just append the task to the in-memory list tasks. And then we're gonna make a redirect response because we don't want to end up on this route but always return back to the home route. Then we again create another route and this is responsible for creating a to-do. So again, we just use our in-memory, let's say database and pop the item with the index that is displayed here. So here we've got the correct href to create uh, or to delete the correct task. And then at the end, we just gonna serve that. So let's stop the current app and run the app.py again. Okay, so this is how it looks like. As you can see, we already get some styling. This is provided by Pico CSS, a minimal CSS framework. And we can now add some items. So just add one, add one again, and we can delete one item. And yeah, just like that, our to-do app works. But take a look at the left. You can see that the website refreshes every time. So this is not what we want. We want to use HTMX. So currently we don't use it, but every time we add something, we make a request to the server and get back the complete re-rendered HTML. So now I'm gonna show you how that looks like with HTMX. Okay, so go to the HTMX app.py. And as you can see, this looks pretty much the same like before, but I created a little function to actually render the items, but the key parts are these, the HX post, hx target hx swap so what do these mean hx post uh, triggers an http request to the specified url so nothing really spectacular but this is the key part hx target and this attribute designates which part of the page should be updated with the response from the server so this time we will not make a complete update of the website but only of the target here and the hx swap attributes determines how the content of the element target should be updated. So we will replace the outer HTML of that target. So I'm gonna show you how that looks like. So we're gonna run python htmx app.py. Now, as you can see, the app looks exactly the same. Oh, I kept it in German, but yeah, no matter what, it doesn't really matter. And as you can see, if we add any elements and if we delete elements, you will not see this refresh symbol triggered, but we only update the part of the document object tree, which has to be updated, but we won't perform a full refresh of the website. And this is how we want our interactive website to behave. Okay, so last example is a small real world application here, the LLM app.py. So what's happening here? We will create a simple chatbot and we again import the required classes and functions from fasthtml.com. And this time we also import from Langchain, human message, AI message, and system message, as well as chat open AI. So we, we will create first a list of messages and then create an instance of chat open AI with gpt4.mini as our model. Then we can use now a special headers list. And inside here, we will import now Tailwind CSS. Tailwind CSS allows us to use utility classes and yeah, make our application much more beautiful than just using the Pico CSS framework. We are also gonna import or reference with a link the Daisy UI library, which is built on top of Tailwind, which makes it even easier to create beautiful components. We also gonna use the script tag here to use HTMX in a minified format. So we can all do that on our own, customize our headers like we did here. So now we're gonna create a class chat message and we're gonna use some Daisy UI styling. So we will use the chat bubble primary class and I'm gonna show you how that looks like. So we're gonna create a chat bubble here on the left and here on the right. So if it's an AI message, we put it on the right and if it's a human message we put it in the, on the left and then we are gonna also add some helper functions from Tailwind like this which gives us a little bit of margin in the bottom. We then create our route so our home route we use a get method here create a form this is used for our input that we want to send 
to the OpenAI model and we use a button here with a little bit of Tailwind styling, um, give that a post method and the action should be sent to the chat endpoint and we also provide our HTMX uh, attributes here to make that interactive and at the end we just gonna return a single div with all of the chat messages and we also give that a div container an ID. So at the end we return this single HTML element with the chat history with our headers in H1. So we put also a little bit of an image here. I created this pirate PNG here with ChatGPT. So it looks a little bit nicer. Okay, so next step is that we create our chat endpoint. This is where we are gonna send our request to when we input something and uh, type the button. So this will make a request to this chat endpoint and this will at the end trigger the invoked method of our LLM. So this will make a request to OpenAI. We will get a response and then we append the AI message here to this messages list. And we also gonna return the diff with all of the chat mess messages here from that endpoint. And the very last step is again, just to run the surf method. So we're gonna use Python LLM app.py and I'm gonna show you how that looks like. So as you can see, this looks quite different than before. Here we've got the Tailwind styling. Here we've got our pirate and we can just type, let's say, hello, how are you? We're gonna click on send and this will now make a request to OpenAI. And here we can see that is the response from OpenAI. And we can just continue with the conversation. Okay, so that's it. I like how easy it is to really make something interactive with HTMX and fast HTML. Of course, it's more low level than Grady or Streamlit, but if you know a little bit of HTML, then I think it's a great framework and I really like it so far. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. See you. Bye bye.